This is Arise News Channel. You're watching The Morning Show with me, Biola Labi. The image business helps build customers' confidence. Some companies use uniforms to create the impression of professionalism, while others develop a corporate culture of service. Whatever approach a business chooses, it suffice to say image is everything. My first guest, Janet Adetu, is a certified executive business coach with expertise in corporate protocol, professional image, personal performance, and leadership development. She is also a certified emotional intelligence assessor, as well as a member of the John Maxwell leadership team. Today, she'll be telling us everything we need to know about projecting ourselves and how to make a first impression. Good morning and welcome Good to the morning, show. Gala. Thank okay. you so much. So there's like everything that, there's <laughs> nothing you don't do, but tell me, the, I mean, one of the biggest things you're known for and one of the biggest things you do is image consulting. Yes. How did you get into this? Well, it's, it's interesting because um, I'm actually a chartered accountant. Mm. And yes, by profession. And it was while I was working as an auditor, I found walking in and out of an organization as an auditor, most of my clients were afraid of me because I was an auditor. So they'll put me in one in ah. room. And like, the auditors around, the auditors yes. around, even from the gate, the security man will say, Madam, please, can you wear your, your name tag? Because the auditors around, and I was the auditor. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I just felt that they were always afraid, maybe because by virtue of the profession, we're investigating. And I later learned that um, I was always boxed in very um, formal suits, high shoulder pads, dark colors. And because I was an auditor, I was always wearing a very stern face mm. and very serious. No friendships because, here. Yeah, the job mm. was really very serious. Um, and I realized most of the results were slow. Information that I was seeking was slow to come out. And people were almost afraid to give me the information that I needed to conduct my audit. And then I had an epiphany one day. And I realized, do you know what? I need to develop rapport with my clients. And I need to tone down and create, build my relationships. More and approachable. Become more approachable. And what did I do? I chose um, more stylish suits. I played down on my colors. So even if I wore a formal color, I wore a lighter color in, 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 inside it. And then, um, of course, when I walk into the office, I walk in with a smile, hmm. direct eye contact. And I'll say, hello, how are you today? How's the family? You know, I'll just develop a kind of rapport with my clients and become more like a sister, even though I was doing my job. And that was how I was able to build relationships. And it worked like magic because I realized the contact, the image that I was creating was one that was more authoritative before. And I needed to create one that was more approachable, mm. one that was more likable, mm. one that developed, you know, trust. Credibility was important for me as well. But you see, a lot of things are all about your appearance, your attitude, your behavior, and the way you conduct and communicate. So I put all those together, and it worked like magic. But let me ask you, though, <laughs> because one of the things that young people, when they're starting out their career, is really trying to build credibility. Right. And also part of that is, like, you know, don't have these personal relationships and don't be so, you know, collegial. You need to be, you know. And especially when you're at the beginning of building your career, how do you make the, how did you separate the two? Well, you see, when it comes to images, everything, and, you know, I do a lot of protocol, etiquette, and it's all about leadership, personal performance. It's about your people's skills and how you develop yourself. You need to do a lot more of one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. And for me, I was, more of, I was more of a relationship person. I found it very easy to smile with people, to talk with people, to You're very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what you need today. So that's why most of the millennials today are having a bit of a problem, even when they're having interviews and they're not getting their jobs, because they've become so attached to connectivity, their, their phones and stuff. They're not mm, engaging they enough one-on-one, -on -one. so you, they need to do more networking, more one-on-one um, -on -one conversations with people, or in groups for that matter. And because they become so um, attached to their gadget, and that's not a human being, so it's more difficult for them to actually relate to people. So you find some people who are star performers, they have the raw talent, they have the experience, they have the expertise, but today that is not enough for you to get a job sometimes, stay in a job and get promoted. Mm. It's really mm. about, even if you step in with very first class, for instance, five years down the line, why are we going to promote you? You must have cultivated team spirit, act like a leader, be able to relate with people that you, know, you work with. You can't stay by yourself. So indeed, image definitely is really about first impressions. What impression do you give people when they meet you for the first time? And today, whether you're in business, in the corporate space, as an entrepreneur, as a youth, 
trying to climb the ladder, trying to get promotion, you must ensure that you leave a good first impression and an even better lasting impression. And that's what actually is the difference between the leaders of today and the amateurs. Mm, because mm, image mm. really does speak volumes for you. And even down to body language, which is saying so much without saying a single word. Sure, sure. It says a lot about you, your personality. And bottom line is we're trying to see the confidence level in you the self-esteem in you, you know, and our businesses, we are employing people who will take our companies forward. We want that person who will project the business because you are the face of the organization. Sure, sure. So if you make one small mistake. Let me jump mistake, in here. Let me hmm. jump in here. So let's say, for example, one of the things that's happening now is, you know, students are graduating around the world. Kids are going to, children are going to be looking for, I mean, young jobs. adults are looking for jobs. How do you make a great first impression? So even let's say you've gotten the job, it's your first day at work. Yeah. How do you make that great first impression? Well, it's very important. Once you step into a new environment, you really don't know anybody. And the important thing you need to do within your first two, one to three months is really build relationships around you. Mm. Who is part of your team? build a relationship with them. You can't stay alone and say you're busy doing something. You have to be a team player, that's key. And when they see you being a team player, that means you speak out, you smile, you give eye contact. When they converse with you, you're very willing to be part of a conversation. What te key. techniques can shy people employ? Because you're, everything you're saying is something that comes easy to people that are outgoing. But if you're a shy person, smiling, looking people in the eye, especially if you've been raised not to look people in the eye, what type of quick techniques can they employ to sort of do this? You know, it's very important that we recognize that there are two different types of people. Mm -hmm. They're extroverts and they're introverts. And a lot of people come to me and say, I'm very shy when I'm asked to give a presentation in the office because, you know, I feel a bit anxious and um, I, I have that element of fear. You know, what you need to do is, first of all, acknowledge that you do have a confidence okay. issue. Okay. That's very important. And then you now have to take steps to work towards how you can build it. So you have a presentation that you have to give. It's compulsory. Maybe you're a team leader, maybe you're a team yes. player. You know, you have to practice. So stand in front of a mirror. Look at some of the areas where you think, uh -huh. let me practice this speech ahead of let me understand what I'm talking about. I may have to see a VIP client. Let me understand exactly what I'm going to say when I get before I get there. Practice, practice, practice. Ask other people as well to comment, to compliment, to even critique you. You know, it's important that they don't just tell you all the good things. Try and activate. Even I do. I tell people, where did I go wrong? You know, okay. just tell me so. Every day is a learning curve. Oh, wow. You know, even if you're shy, you know, uh, it's something that doesn't happen overnight. Okay. You're going to have to build on it. We're going to take a quick break because when I come back, I really want to go into the stuff you do around etiquette. So we're at time out for a short break. When we come back, we'll continue speaking with our guest about etiquette and how to make the best first impression. Welcome back to The Morning Show with me, Biola Alabi. I'm still in the studio with my guest, Janet Adetu, who is an etiquette expert, and she will give you everything you need to make the best first impression. Right. Once again, thank you for being here You're welcome. today. Thank you very much. So before we went on a break, you were saying some really key salient things about really how to make the best first impression. And if you're a shy person, techniques to help you. And one of the things I liked about what you said was looking in the mirror and practicing on friends. Right. So even before your first day at work, let's say you're in a new work environment, you want to make a great first impression. How do you, so I'm in the mirror now saying, okay, my first day at work, what, what am I saying? How, what, do, what do I say? Because sometimes it's even what to say that people get stuck yeah, on. Yeah, and even with first impressions, to be honest with you, what really matters, first of all, what people see, the impact you have on people is your appearance. Mm -hmm. So that really counts a lot. So when you're going to work for the first time, you really want to dress the way that you will be accepted. You want to dress to fit into that industry. You want to be dressed to be acceptable amongst the people that you're working with. So you don't want to go in looking overdressed or underdressed. So appearance really is key. And that's the first impact that you have when people see you. And then, of course, body language also speaks a lot of volumes as well in terms of are you happy to be around? What's your face saying? What's your body language <laughs> saying? Are you really happy to be with, with us in this place? And that goes a long way before you even say a single word. Mm. And most times people have already judged you just by your appearance. Just by showing you, up. Just by showing up. And it could be, are you approachable? Do you look likable? Do you look friendly? Mm. And that look already makes people think, okay, I'd like to say hello to her. I'd like to have a conversation with her. 
her. But if it is the negative way and it's like, oh gosh, who's that person? You're not likely going to attract people towards you. You really want to be approachable. Okay. And that's why colors do play a lot in appearance. Mm. Absolutely. So for a first day of work, what are good colors to wear depending on, the, like if colors. you're in a very corporate environment? Yeah, so, you know, even if you're going to wear your corporate colors like your black or your dark blue or your navy, so to say, or even your dark grey, you really want to wear that with something lighter inside. So if you popped a jacket on what you're wearing now, for instance, it would be perfectly okay. Okay. You don't want to do multicolored. You want to really look the part. No polka dots. No polka day. dots. No, not too many stripes. I would say go go with single colors, monocolors, mm -hmm. and always wear a color that is lighter inside your suit or your jacket. Even if it's your accessories, you know, you want to be mindful of how you approach people because the eye sees a lot, mm. and color has, mm. a, has a lot of psychology. Mm. and it plays a big part in whether we're going to accept your parents or not. And you always want to look corporate. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a leader. <laughs> so I know that etiquette plays a huge part of what you do. I mean, across the continent, across yeah. Nigeria, you're known as the etiquette lady. Yeah. I know you've also done a lot of work in the corporate environment. Yeah. What are, why is etiquette so important in everything we do? Like, why is that such a bedrock? Honestly of speaking, even if I have to go strict, strictly for a business case of etiquette in, in organizations, it's, it, because competition is so stiff, it's taking more than just having a product or a service and pointing it to someone and say, buy. Why should I buy from you? What makes you stand out from the crowd why can't I buy from someone else? So those are the things that we expect to see. That thing that is a small difference, that small detail, really, that makes that big difference. So, for instance, um, clients will jump ship once they see something that they don't like. So, for instance, again, I've had clients tell me with um, some of their VIP clients, they've complained that some of the employees walk into meetings late without a phone call, mm. without even telling them why, no excuse, no reason why they're late. They walk into organizations chewing gum and the client is like, mm? they walk into the client's office, they're sitting in front of the client and they're arguing in the presence of the client. Or sometimes you come in with your big bag and you pop it on the desk of the client and they're looking like, ooh, wow. So these little things, they, uh, they really make a big difference. And yes, the important thing is in business, once again, you're trying to build relationships. Mm -hmm. You can't do business without people. They want to be able to see some trust, some credibility. You know, um, there's some honesty. There's something like, okay, I feel I can do business with you because you come across as somebody who, yes, I can sustain my business with somebody like you. The moment you look anything different or you appear rude, you know, it's something that they will think, okay, no, no, I don't think I want to do business with them. I will jump ship mm. and use another client. Other than that, too, you can imagine if there's so much rudeness in an organization sure, sure. Um, and we're trying to, sh I need information from you, you need to give information to C, C needs to give information to D to get the ultimate picture and create profitability for the organization. The moment we're arguing, um, we become loggerheads mm -hmm. and then morale goes down. And then profitability Maybe goes down. Maybe there's bullying in the office. Profitability goes down automatically because there are excuses for absenteeism. There are excuses for people to now say, you know what, I'm going to go to my plan B, I want to change my job. And your performance goes down, your productivity goes down. So when you work affects... with corporate clients, because a lot of what you're saying now is actually around profitability of a company and yeah. how etiquette, how protocol, Absolutely. How all these things play into that. And as, as com companies are listening to you or CEOs are listening to you, tell us about some, some interesting experiences you've had working with companies and how just having the right environment, the right etiquette, emotional intelligence can actually increase Absolutely. profitability. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I always tell um, organizations that the, your employees are the face of your organization. They can make or break your business. And indeed, it's important that your employees stand out from the crowd. As an organization, you want to be the go-to company. You want your employees to be the go-to people that people will call when they need something. And therefore, it's important to invest in your employees so that when they go to clients' offices, they create the right rapport that people will want to say, yes, I'd like to continue doing business with you. Even if you're an entrepreneur and you're so doing So let me give you an thing. example. So a client calls you in, you're, it's a big corporation, and they're saying, look, one of the things we're having is people sharing information because information in a lot of yeah. corporate environments is, is power. Key. Yeah. How do you work with them on understanding how to share information? Like, what do you do? What type of exercises so, do you do in those environments? A lot of things. In my training um, courses, I try to pro um, project executive presence. 
um, whether you are an individual, whether you are a professional, whether you are an in, you know a corporate person, it doesn't really matter. Presence is key in whatever you do, whether you're in the entertainment industry as well. So I promote the importance of making a good first impression and what you need to do, your appearance, the way you behave, your attitude, your conduct, and your communication. So I do a lot of work on how to communicate well. So for example, in business, this is a business card. We don't want to see you bringing out your business card from your back pocket, you know, from your side pocket, <laughs> from underneath your bag. Even the thought that you're looking for your business card in the presence of a client actually can sabotage, sabotage your image. So we always expect you to have a business card holder kept somewhere where you can find it in your bag or briefcase Oops. and we expect you to bring it out so many times we go to networking events and you're asking somebody where's your business card and you say oh i forgot it at home in the office or in the car mm. and that is one thing that is one major business tool that you must always carry around. So presence is key. Let me see. So you seem to, this so, does look so, so clean. We and have it now out. I feel like I should have one of these nice, pristine <laughs> A little card. ones. Yes. It's like, okay. The holder, you bring it out and you present it because you're marketing your mm. services and your product. And all of this communicates. All the whole act of bringing it out, presenting it is key. And then even you that's receiving the card as well, you're looking at it, you're keeping it. You know, you're not going to say, okay. So that's an interaction on its own. So you're that already, so those are the things you do with major advanced communication skill that we try to project among, you know, in corporate offices and even with individuals. So I'm a CEO, I'm listening to you right now and I'm <laughs> like, ah, oh, we don't need that. We, we, we have, oh, wow. why do, why should, why do you, why do corporations call you? And when oh, they do they call, call me you? they call me a lot because majorly some of their staff have confidence issues, mm. self-esteem issues, and they are facing v VIP clients. And they're wondering, okay, what can we do to help them present themselves better because they're representing us. Um, presentation skills, you know, dressing as well is a major thing. I've had sure. clients call me to say, we have a dress policy, but uh, there's a thin line between casual Friday and corporate where people are missing the boat a little bit. They look as if they're a little overdressed for casual Friday. Can we re-emphasize the importance of how our parents... Well, some people sometimes look. are too casual for casual Friday. They're really too casual for casual Friday, and organizations are having that issue, you know, um, down to um, animal colors, animal skin, <laughs> shoes. And, like, where do we draw the line, mm. you know? So again, to communication is key as a leader in any business. Um, behavior to conduct, you know, we don't want to see you doing some things that are unethical um, when you're mm, in business, mm, you know, mm. and it could be basic things from picking your nose to, you know, the way you do your hair and how you come out when you step out And sometimes day. when you don't get promoted, you have no idea what is causing that. Sometimes it is just don't that understand. someone might have seen you picking your nose. Made, yes. So, for example, I had an organization call me because one of the executives went on an international assignment, a conference, and the report came back to them to say he was dunking his bread in soup and for them their image was completely sabotaged because they felt this is an executive this is a leader he didn't represent them very well and these are little things like that actually come across to organizations as the small detail that make the big difference mm. so um, a lot of companies say you know do we need this it's not important well for the Millennials it is even more important because you have a culture that you have built over the last 20 years mm -hmm. and they're coming with their different styles the organizations have multi generations now the young the old yes we're know, all in the workplace and we're all in the workplace and we all need to have one common goal one common culture and we all need to sing the same song and, they all, and that's the only way we can make profit and if we don't be able if we don't have one kind of uniform way of doing things in the organization then we're going to send the wrong messages to our clients and our clients so make all quickly the i want to switch gears a little bit you are an emotional intelligence assessor yes. tell me what that means and how oh, that comes to life it's so key so we find that to a large extent, we have good leaders amongst us, but many of them are not taking cognizance of how they impact people or their team players. It is very important. It sounds like bullying in the workplace. Yeah, it's, it's very important that when you have workers in your workplace, you understand how you come across to them and you also have empathy for some of the things that they are going mm. through as well. Mm. Many times you see performances dropping and you wonder why. It's, as a leader, it's like, is everything okay? You know, when you see the expression on the face, you have a rapport with your staff. All right, Jenna, I want to jump into this. Culturally, though, yes. there is a culture. I mean, we do, there's a culture of bullying in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And therefore, also, there's a culture in the workplace that you should just be happy that you have a job. Yeah. How do you work with executives to help them understand that it's not just one-sided, they both need each other. 
most, and that's where emotional intelligence comes into play. The fact that you understand yourself, you understand what you like, you understand how you come across as a leader, you understand your own leadership style and how it impacts your team players. And then you also understand the people that are on your team. You must have some understanding of the people who are on your team so that you know how to place them and you know how they can come across and you know the kind of work that they will produce. If you have a very quiet person, you know what to give the quiet person. If you have an outspoken person, you know how to come across to that outspoken person. So leaders person. have to go the extra mile to actually understand. Yeah, I, I think they have said now, um, research has said that indeed, um, a lot of leaders need to go through that emotional intelligence aspect of being a leader, the training, the understanding, because that's the way you can lead. If team players are not on your side and the message that you're singing is not getting across to team players, then you're not going to achieve much. So everyone that sees you think of you as etiquette, but a lot of what you're doing is actually you're a pro profitability creator. Yes, you're trying to create profitability have, for companies. Um, yes. Because we so how can want. people find you? Where can they find well, you? And if people have specific <laughs> questions, how can they get those Oh, absolutely. Answer? I mean, um, generally speaking, we have a consulting group. We're into leadership training. Cons we're also into recruitment and outsourcing, as well as multimedia. Mm, you do yes. everything. Yes, I do a lot of work on um, TV, radio, and print. And of course, you know, outsourcing as well. We train people that we even recruit. And you know, to a large extent, people can reach me on e by email. You know, so they can um, ask you questions. They can ask me my first of day of work. Yes. I have a polka I'm dot very dress. Open to, Should yes, I wear it? I get it all the time. <laughs> yes, I have a gala. I have a dinner. What do I wear? Oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, I fantastic. had a friend who called and said, I have a major dinner I have a tuxedo but I don't have the white shirt to go with it I've grown out of the one I have can I wear an ordinary shirt I said well if you have a tuxedo you have to go the whole nine yards you do need to wear a wing colored white shirt to go with that and that will make you look completely on point. You're like a doctor. People call you, hey, I have a headache. <laughs> yes, it's like oh I need absolutely. this, I need that. So yes I'm available by email. Um, Janet's Aditu at um, janet.aditu at jsketiquetteconsortium.com or the easier one, JT Aditu at hotmail.com. And of course, I can also be reached, uh, um, you can reach me on 0813 183 <laughs> well. We're going to find you on social so, media. You that's will. It. It's so and they easy. Can, people can ask you questions. Millions and I think questions. that um, yeah. I think what, what you've really taught us today is that you really can't underestimate how important it is yeah, to first, have absolutely. First, the, a good yeah. first impression. And indeed, protocol, leadership skills, people skills are very important. They are the major interpersonal skills. It's a lifestyle. And it's, it's important that today we try to fine tune ourselves to a lifestyle that sets us to stand out from the crowd and dare to be different. Thank you so much for being <laughs> here. Welcome. We're going to take a quick break now. And when we come back, we'll be speaking with Nkiru Achuku on affordable retail and actually how you can make a first impression, a good first impression on a minimal budget. So she's going to help us get, get yeah. the right colors the right and everything. Yes. yes. So stay tuned, guys.